I'm Bill DeFoy, and welcome back in here to News Junkies. Visiting with us this week is our very lovely travel guide to the unknown, Michelle Hubbard. Michelle, good to have you back with us. Oh, so happy to be here, Bill. Thank you. Well, thank you. So it would the, the question begs itself, what is a travel guide to the unknown? Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, sometimes we're in a place in our life where maybe a vision, maybe a calling, maybe a sense of purpose is pulling us, or maybe there's an illness, maybe there's a job loss, maybe there's a divorce that's kind of pushing us into this new way of being ourselves, new way of experiencing our life that starts to feel very unknown. And it's also so strong, either push, pull, push or pull, that we're in it. And it helps to not be in that space all by ourselves. It helps to have some tools. I think of Lyft as my GPS guidance and protection system for traveling in the unknown because that's what got me through my unknown of divorce, uh, changing my whole life upside down from Hawaii to California. Um, and so I feel like that's what I have to offer and share with people that can help them when they're in this place of such a tremendous opportunity for growth and expansion. So when we experience new things or what I call new starting blocks in life, <laughs> they could actually be an adventure and some people look at it more as, oh, this is a challenge. Well, and that is because it's terrifying. It can be so new and can feel so foreign and things happen when we begin to change. Relationships maybe are different and people who used to be friends we don't have so much in common with and demands on our time are different and so our priorities become different and so it can be a little bit lonely. It can be a little bit brand new scary but my theory and this is my own personal theory, is that this space of the unknown that feels so scary is really us stepping further into that invisible part of us. And I think of that as our soul. And when we're in our soul, actually, even though it's brand new, different, and uh, a little bit deeper way of being in that space, it's the most held and loved space that there is. So that's why it's really important to me to help people who are feeling willing to at least take these steps into it to make it an easier friendly experience for those that may be uncomfortable in launching out and maybe making that first step can it be scary and if so how can they overcome it well i don't know that fear uh, is something you do overcome i think of it more like including and for me what 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 was my first step and what I work on with my clients is the loving yourself. Because when you get more solid in yourself and no matter how what you're used to thinking of as messy you're showing up or how vulnerable you're willing to express yourself as, then all of a sudden you're more centered within yourself, connecting with this space of all that we are, all that we came from. And when you're there, things don't seem as scary anymore. Even if they're new and different, they don't seem as scary. And that's why sometimes maybe fear is exactly what we need to focus on, including. But first of all, we have to just objectively, with love, be aware that that's where we're at. Now, something that I found when I was going through my journey in the unknown was decision making became a little bit trickier because I became aware of wanting to be really fully owning and landing. Did I have a yes to, to something or did I have a no to something? And I got confused because, well, I was used to thinking of, well, how will this person react to this? Was sort of a, you know, do I really want to show up being kind of messy? A lot of what will people think about this? Um, and not wanting to hurt somebody's feelings. So I got confused between do I feel scared about making this leap because it's so big, new, different, or do I have a no because, you know, I just plain old don't want to go to this movie today. That's not something that interests me. And that's one of the things that I like to try and help people get more clear on. Do I have a no or am I feeling scared? And that's a, a valid point. Now, when I think of fear, I think of an acronym. I think of two ways of expressing fear, false experiences appearing real or 
false expectations appearing <laughs> real. I like the expectations. I had never heard that one before. But you, you get the point that yeah. sometimes we're afraid of what may happen if we take this step. Now, let me give you an example. Okay. This goes back years and years and years ago. And those that know me and know me well know that I do have a shy side to me. I can sit in the corner and be quiet and I'm just as, as happy as happy can be. Um, and I was invited to a party. It was a dinner party. I get going, ah, do I really want to go Do I or do I not? So I thought, well, why, what have I got to lose? So I got in my car. I drove over to the person's house. I got all the way up to the doorstep and I could hear the other, other dinner guest inside and there was some music in the background and some chatter going on. I said, I can't deal with this. Wow. I turned around, I did a, three, a 180, not a 360, but a 180, because when you do a 360, you come full circle. So a 180 is an about face and I was out of there. I was gone. That is such great noticing. So you had a real clear awareness that you had to know. And I'm curious because I was going to do an exercise that would lead us to this exact point, but since you already had this in, this instant of it, were there any sensations in your body that, that kind of led you to believe, I just don't want to be in there? Was there body awareness? Was there like words? How did you get this? this information that I have a no to this. I had a sense, as I can relax, uh, recollect from that time, there was this tingling sensation all throughout. Wow. And I went, I'm just not comfortable. So important to listen to your body. Now, a lot of people, I'll, I'll make it personal, I've been in instances where I've even heard that and still gone on didn't honor my no, what was it that allowed you to take that next step of owning that no, honoring that no, and not going into this activity that you'd, you'd really landed on that you didn't want to go into? Well, I don't know that I fully understand the question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I just knew that this was not the time nor the place for me. Got back in my car, drove back to where I was living at the time, and kind of crashed and burned and said, I, I just didn't want to deal with it. And it was because I was going into an environment where there would have been a lot of people, and I mean a lot, probably 20, 25 people, that I did not know at all except for one. And I would have been outside, really outside of my comfort level. So that's sounding uh, like you were really scared. Yeah, I probably was to an extent, but it was definitely a no not to ring the doorbell and enter in. Now, I will say that later on, uh, I had attended other uh, parties that this person invited me to, but this first one, I did not. But between point A and point B, I had met several of the people that were invited to the first party, so I had a sense of who I would be encountering the next go around. So I had a better level of comfort than I did the first time. Have you ever gone in the door when there was absolutely no one that you knew was going to be there? I have done that yeah. in, in recent years, yes. So uh, you, you've met your fear somehow and are not letting it stop you anymore? I'm not letting it stop me anymore. One of the things that has uh, been part of my life over the course of time. I'm in a in a business of communication, have been for years. Um, and I was thrust into situations where I would be out covering a story and would encounter a number of different people that I have never met before. And so it became more of this is now a new opportunity to meet somebody. Now, let me give you an example, and this goes back to you and I. Uh, we had done something for an organization that you're affiliated with, which is the Soar Optimist Club, right. and they were involved in the Salsa Festival in the city of Oxnard, and they were doing 
uh, kind of a meet and greet or a, what I call a grip and grin and a, <laughs> a demonstration of the salsa presentation that they were going to do at the dance and it was a mixer of sorts and I walked into a car dealership and one of the very first people that I met that evening was you. Oh. And when we had met, uh, I just felt an instant connection. And we had talked for just a couple of minutes and said, you know, I'm interested in being a part of your video series. What say you? And I'm going, yes, <laughs> let's do it. And sure enough, we did. And we've been doing this now. We get together every couple of weeks and uh, generate a video. And I'm having the time of my life. I am too. And I'm so appreciating how you're illustrating this listening to a yes or a no that comes up and then following it and I'm also hearing that you didn't really stop being afraid but you kind of turned it into yeah I'm feeling scared and I'm curious I heard um, you have and I know that from watching you in interviews you do have this sense of curiosity so you kind of said, well, yeah, I'm scared, but there's an opportunity here for me to learn something that's going to just absolutely surprise me. Well, you know as well as I do, when we sit down, if people had an overhead camera, they would see absolutely no notes whatsoever. <laughs> right. None. <laughs> Zippo. And very rarely... Nothing up our sleeves. Nothing, yeah, except my arm and even at that. Um, no, there are no notes, and very rarely do I bring a little three by five card or a little page of notes that I can uh, reference during the course of an interview, it's usually, um, as I had said to somebody earlier today, I do this off the top of my bald little head. Well, and that's what makes it so authentic. And that's what makes it so comfortable for the person you're with is that you're totally you and no rigid outline or script and so that's how we can be with you so it's a, a gift that you're sharing and um, I think what I would like to just uh, bring bring it back to is this awareness of no or when I feel scared or when I feel scared but I'm gonna do something anyway or when I feel scared but I'm not gonna do it I'm hearing there's like a space where you, you kind of, you're, you're able to identify those. And I don't know if it happens when you take a breath, after you feel scared, or what happens, but um, whatever will help us get into the presence of being able to identify a yes, a no, or scared is going to help us to then make the uh, move we want to make, including into this really scary unknown place. Well, you know, anymore it's, now I have a sense of anticipation. What is the opportunity that awaits? And so I try to make the most of that opportunity and be able to um, perhaps participate at some level. Uh, I attend a, a, a luncheon with a group of people every month. Um, and I enjoy the luncheon, but when I first went, I didn't know a soul. Yeah. Not one person, well, maybe one or two, but really the vast majority I didn't know but as I have gone to these rather consistently now for the last year or so I've gotten to know certain people in the group by being sitting at a table with them and getting involved in a discussion and I would not have gotten to know those individuals at all had I not taken that leap of faith to go in there sit down with them and have an opportunity to uh, share a meal together and to engage in conversation. I know exactly that feeling. I go to a lot of things by myself as well and what I've started to do is when I feel the scared, I feel it in my belly, it'll start to get clenched. So I'll say, okay, my scared feeling is with me and I imagine it's a little girl and I'm taking her hand and she's coming in with me. So I've got my fear with me but doesn't have to totally control the outcome of the situation and um, after a while she just kind of blends into me and you know like you say there's people to talk to and surprises to have happen exactly and you never know what you're going to get out of that experience and so 
now I always look for the positive outcome rather than trying to set up a wall of negativity because in that fear or in that saying no, in my judgment, you're actually erecting a wall between you and another party. Maybe um, it could also be you don't want to uh, tune out to your internal guidance that says this, this is not a safe place. And maybe it will be in the future, but you're right now in this moment. And you don't want to abandon yourself and thrust you out somewhere that doesn't feel safe to you because then you don't think that you're on your side. Um, so I think it's important to listen and just kind of feel out, um, is this a big new experience that's scaring me or is this a, a just plain old no? And you don't really ha even have to justify the no. It's okay to have a no and it's okay to honor your no because then you're letting yourself know that you hear you and you're on your side and I think that's the most important is to be able to have that knowing and that's how I hear you've made your progress too well I can go back this this goes back years ago and it wasn't so much encountering others but uh, facing a fear of uh, being out uh, on the open seas I was invited to uh, be a part of a media junket through the uh, Naval Air Station at Point Magoo, and we were gonna fly out via helicopter and be dropped onto a ship and watch missile launches as they were to uh, send off these uh, missiles off the wow. deck of the ship to knock out the drones in the air. So we were all ferried out. There was probably eight or 10 of us that flew out on this helicopter and it was a Chinook. And if you know what helicopters are in the military, these are the ones with the two big rotor blades. And so we were uh, going off past uh, San Nicolas Island and we were appraised before boarding the ship. Oh, by the way, people, we're not going to land. What? How are we going to get onto the ship? Oh, they're going to put a horse collar on you. Oh, my God. Yes. So here we are, horse collar down, you're down on deck. The going down wasn't so bad because you were down on the deck within literally seconds. It was taking you back up because that was a slow process. It seemed like forever getting oh, off yeah. the deck of the ship back into the helicopter. So once you got on board you could sit out and look at the others coming up it was at first it was very scary i've done this twice now wow and i would do it again in a heartbeat oh gosh <laughs> uh, it was scary at first but it's like oh my gosh i'm having the time of my life because you see this portrayed in movies and uh you know kevin costner did one years ago called the guardian and they flew out on the coast guard helicopter to rescue mariners at sea off the coast of Alaska, very choppy waters, and going, I did that. Wow, that is, that's amazing. But had I said, no, I think I'm just going to stay here in the helicopter, I would not have been able to get down on ship, experience them launching missiles from the deck, and by the way, those go off lightning quick. But here's the thing. Had I not done that, I would not have had that experience to draw on, and that has become one of my favorite uh, all-time experiences and memories. Wow. Yeah, so it's important to know when you're scared and to see if the scared is a yes or a no. Because I'm hearing it might have been scary, but there was a part of you that had a great big old excited big, yes big, to it. A big adventure, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's a perfect illustration of just getting clear on what is it you're feeling and letting that be what guides you into your movement. Because if you're feeling a no and it's time for you to go home and rest, do that. Even if it's scary to go in and meet new people, separating from the fear, you had a no to that evening, that event. And even though it's scary when it comes to jumping out of a plane and <laughs> not going to land, but you're feeling somewhere inside you the tingle of yes, go for it. Sure. And I did. And I look back on it. I'm going, I'm glad I did that. I did that. <laughs> I did that. Been there, done that. And so um, 
it's one of these things where I, I truly believe had I resisted saying yes to this, I would not have had this experience of doing it. And then when I was invited back, uh, I went, yes, let's go for it. Because I knew what to expect. Then you and, knew what to expect, right. And yeah. I'm going, okay, I can do this. I, I can be a little bit more confident. But the first time, yes, once I got over everything, it's like, I, I actually survived this. This was good. Yeah. Well, for me, I find that if I take a breath, when I feel scared, that helps me land on, is this a scared that I want to listen to as a no? Or is this a scared that's saying to me, this is a really big leap for you. And if it's a big leap, a lot of times I'm willing to take it. If it's an absolute no, um, I would like to think I'll honor that more and more often now. Yeah, and I, for me, on, on certain situations, I have discovered that, yes, I may think about it, let me get back to you later, because I want to sit and, in, because I have a, a way of internally digesting things before I respond. If somebody says, well, would you do this? Uh, let me think about it for a bit. And I have to kind of mull it over in my mind. And internally what I'm doing is taking a piece of paper with a line down the middle, pros, cons. Yes, no, <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yes, no. Yeah. And whatever is the longer of the, the list, that's the option that I will go with. Well, and I'm appreciating how you uh, pause to land on yes, no, pro, con, and maybe even adding into there or just plain old scared. Yes, yes, and sometimes that's right at the head of the list on the con. Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. Like you said before, it's a way of uh, uh, preventing ourselves maybe from having a really great experience. And you still gotta be aware that that's what it is that's happening. For me, I try and listen also to what my body's doing because I'll, I'll find that there's some indicators there. Um, when I have a no, I notice I get kind of a clenchiness just all over my body. And when I have a, a scared and the feeling of tightness in my belly, I'll still have kind of an excitement in my, my heart and a looseness around my face that almost wants to smile but feels scared. Mm -hmm. So when you put it all together, we're trying to give ourselves the very most accurate guidance all the time. And listening to that is really important, I think. So if we were to sum this all up, what would you tell people about listening to their internal GPS? I would say to listen and not judge, not criticize, not compare, not wonder about others. And then once you listen, um, let your body wisdom, your body uh, sensations kind of lead you in the direction of yes or no. Because fear is uh, kind of, you know, that's one of the things we're hardwired to feel. It's, it's a part of us. So it's always going to be there. It's just um, how do we want to experience it um, as that kind of, you know, excitement that's going to move us forward or, oh, okay, this is like a warning that this is a no for me right now. Well, I know going back to the experience at this one dinner party that I had described earlier, yes, I got a tingling, but it was almost paralyzing to a point. Wow, yeah. And it's like, ooh, the body just kind of tensed up and, nope, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to cross the line this time, maybe later. And fortunately, exactly. I was able to meet others and then be ushered in with a little bit more comfort and a little bit more ease. Right. And uh, what a great relationship you have with yourself that you get that kind of a clear message. Very good. I would be remiss, as always, Michelle, if I didn't allow you an opportunity to share your phone number and website for our viewership. Thank you. My email address is Michelle Hubbard, and then the number four and the letter U at gmail.com. My website is michelleforyou.com, and my phone number is area code 805-814-6884. Wonderful. Michelle Hubbard, our travel guide into the unknown, and she'll be back with us very soon, and we thank you for joining us. I'm Bill DeFoy. You've been watching News Junkies 
a production of the Heritage Media Group.